What's up guys, we're here at AMC Town Square with Chasing Cinema. Mr. James Shoot. Dot com, and we're here for The Happy Time Murders. The Happy Time Murders, a movie that got a huge reaction when it uh, debuted some footage at CinemaCon. What Love. was that? Yeah, tell me about that. Well, you know, basically, I guess some people knew about it. That was the first time I had heard about The Happy Time Murders, which is shocking because I am such a big Henson fan. Jim Henson, obviously, would be the man who brought the world to Muppets, introduced us to Kermit the Frog. Uh, you know, unfortunately passed away. Did you ever watch Muppet Babies? I watched Muppet Babies. I used to watch that. I watched Fraggle Rock. Fraggle Rock was a big one mm -hmm. growing up. You know, pretty much anything. And, you know, I love the Muppet movie when they brought it back. The TV show obviously didn't really work. It ended up not continuing and that was kind of a bummer. But, you know, I'm a big Henson fan. Uh, however, Brian's time to take a little swerve here with this uh, raunchy... Jim Wynn left, he's going right. <laughs> yeah, he's going far right for sure. And uh, this Happy Time Murders Literally. is going to be this raunchy comedy that kind of is inspired by South Park and you know, um, Team America World Police and all of the times where we see something childish do the naughty type things. And we've obviously seen that in the trailer. I mean, the trailer is pretty much what you know, uh, have been the same. I don't think they've really varied very much. Liz McCarthy is teamed up with a, a Muppet, a puppet cop, and, uh, you know, they have to solve a mur some murder cases. All so. street. No sesame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Which I don't think, did that joke make it in? No. Yeah, I didn't hear that joke. So anyway, um, what did you think of the Happy Time murders? Did you have a happy time? It was... A killing. <laughs> it wasn't for me. Yeah. Yeah, this movie, it wasn't good for me. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even... <laughs> I think, of the, I think a lot of the, the, the made the jokes, motivational speaker speechless. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the, a lot of the jokes was in the trailer. Mm. Um, Are the jokes? I don't honestly don't even have anything really good to... I, it wasn't for me. I wasn't the target audience for this and I, I wanted... I sat in it and chuckled a few times like <laughs> you know it's like oh they're <laughs> it, it, it seemed like it's all I got dog I'm done it, it, it seemed like they really were like into it in the first 20 minutes of the movie like they had some ideas they started really implementing stuff and then the rest like when they actually started getting into the the case solving they just like totally were like alright just I guess do the I mean it, you didn't even need Muppets anymore like there was no more the first 20 minutes you learn about these ideas that they're puppets and granted it's not like oh really cool world building but you know like they do establish what's going on they establish that there's this hierarchy and this kind of racism towards puppets and you know we have this interesting sequence in, in, a, in a, a puppet porn shop and all this stuff that, that while very you know silly in terms of raunchy comedy at least like they're trying to create this interesting thing but once we actually get um you know philip phillips teamed up with the the lead muppet or puppet uh teamed up with melissa mccarthy and they start solving this these these murders it really just loses all of its steam and trying to just become something else and just i mean really i was kind of fighting to stay awake the last 45 minutes of the movie. I mean, I think it really wore off, wore, uh, wore off for the like, first 20 minutes. And not that that's even that strong, um, but it just really kind of felt weak. Like, I don't, I laughed a few times in the movie in the beginning. You know, I was like, okay, this is what we expected. But you know, there's a few moments I thought were kind of creative and a little bit funny. There's a couple winks to some classic Muppets here and there. And, uh, but as we go on, I mean, it just becomes a very generic, you know, movie, and it almost feels like you could have replaced it with humans and it would have been just a generic thing. Like, it reminded me of that one movie that I can't remember the name of, of course, with Reese Witherspoon and is it Sofia Vergara? Like, that really generic buddy cop movie, these two guys. I mean, like, it was just that, only one of them's a Muppet. Like, what? And that's like the whole rest of the movie, just like lifeless, and you don't care. And like, I don't really, the, the joke of this movie is that we don't really care about these murders because they're just puppets. We just want them to be funny and make all these really awkward situations. And, the whole half of the movie is like almost like a really just not so great comedic cop movie. You know, the beginning of what you said was interesting, actually. That one line where he's like, uh, friend, you don't have to do this anymore. You know, yeah. you don't have to sing and dance anymore. You don't have, you're not. There is an interesting. That was interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's definitely the, in the beginning, and you kind of learn about how there's, there's like this really like just human disdain for, for Muppets, or I keep calling them Muppets, but puppets, and that, and I, I think there was something interesting there. I was also really intrigued to kind of see, um, these these characters that I've grown up knowing, not specifically, you know, characters, but these type of characters I grew up watching, not being um, subdued to being behind tables and things like that. That was pretty weird to see them mm -hmm. green screened out and actually be able to walk around and be in full view. But I mean, yeah, like, there's really nothing here. I mean, if I, I think this was an SNL skit 
that would have been great as a five minute skit, right? I think it works in that sense, but this is one of those situations, which I feel like there was something else recently where they had the concept down, they had the first couple minutes in, and then the rest they just were like, all right, we'll just do what you gotta do. You know, let's just make this movie and get it out. And uh, it feels very lifeless, it's, it's not very fun. The, the second half of the movie is really rough to get through. And yeah, it's just, it's not a good time. I'll say the best part of the movie was probably the credits. They do like this behind the scenes of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine being on set and <laughs> doing yeah. that. Like, that's interesting. No, absolutely. I mean, and that was even fine. I mean, I think by that time I was really over it. You know, I was interested in how they were doing some of the stuff, which they kind of show and mm -hmm. on, on how they operate the, these uh, um, oh. puppets. <laughs> these characters. Yeah, I keep wanting to say Muppets. But uh, I mean, overall, there's really just, I mean, as far as a the movie, there's not. Like, Miss McCarthy phoned this in. She does not bring anything to this movie. Maya Rudolph also makes an appearance and she doesn't really do much. I mean, it, there's just no nothing to really grasp onto. I and mean, the TV host guy, Joe McHale. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of actual appearances. I didn't know there's he was a in lot, the movie. and there, you know, there's some people in here, but there's still nothing there to really kind of offer. I mean, um, I think another good one, other gimmick that I liked is how one of the Muppets are killed. Uh, some little little chihuahuas and some little doggies getting let loose. Oh, I felt so bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. I felt I, but bad. I think like there's your interesting kind of yeah, world. Yeah, that, you know, like that's, that's the stuff where we should explore. Like yeah. that was really I felt funny bad. because you feel bad. You're like, oh, this guy's like literally like in the in in this world, it's being he's being torn he's being to shreds. Murdered, yeah. But in reality, it's just these dogs who want to play with the toy. And, and there's like something interesting there. But of course, we just go to the generic like, oh, we got to solve this murder. We hate each other. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You know, you're an really, idiot. <laughs> yeah. Let's make this raunchy joke, you know, and let's say, you know, dirty words, and uh, it really falls flat after that. A, a very, very forgetful flat movie. Love it. Yeah. Well, hopefully, let's not. That will not be the case next week because we're going to be on the computer, searching, searching, literally. Well, are we in a new age of uh, these Asian actors? Yeah, I mean, it, what's going on here? <laughs> This one looks good. Wow, uh, a month with two wide two, releases. Two, and, it's, and I think actor. it's a movement. <laughs> this is a movement because there's two films. And the sad part is it is kind of a movement. Uh, yeah, you know, not but exactly. <laughs> Yeah, no, but... Uh, and um, then the Blake Lively film that we were talking about with... Uh, a Simple Favor. With uh, Anna Kendrick. Kendrick has Henry Gold, yeah. Golding. I believe Golding, yeah. Anyway, um, uh, if you want to come next week, though, for searching, let us know. Yeah, John Cho. Comment below. It's going to be a very interesting movie, and we want you to be here at AMC Town Square at 10 o'clock. Hopefully a really, really great thriller that talks about social media and, you know, the age of technology. I hope there's a nice twist, because I love those twists. Oh, you know there's going to be a twist. Hopefully it's just not a dumb twist that feels like it makes everything unreal. John Cho's the bad guy. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And if that is the case, we haven't seen the movie yet. This is a non-spoiler. He just guessed it correct. Nostradamus. <laughs> okay, uh, either way, I think um, <laughs> you're the man, you're the woman, you're the man. Chasing Simba.com is known as the Film Lovers website. <laughs>